Th that brings us uh, to our uh, last but not least speaker, uh, uh, our guest from Germany, Jutta Veduvin. Uh, she's a sociologist that's who studied in Hamburg, Jerusalem, and Berlin. Uh, and she is, since 2012, uh, uh, the head of Aktion Sühnezeichen, meaning Action Reconciliation Service for Peace, uh, which is a German peace organization founded to confront the legacy of Nazism, with many young volunteers uh, also among other countries in Israel. And in her, her academic and professional interest is the teaching of the Third Reich, but also uh, the place of the meaning for today of this legacy. So I invite Jutta to come and speak to us. Thank you very much, Gisela, for the kind introduction and thank you for the invitation to this conference. As um, Gisela Dax introduced me, I will speak on behalf of Aktion Sühne, Zeichen Friedensdienste. The translation to Hebrew would be Otta Kapara Veha Shalom, and there is also the English term Action Reconciliation Service for Peace, and I will use the German and the English term now in my words. Aktion Sühne, Zeichen was founded in 1958 by the Protestant Church, in Germany to take responsibility for the Nazi crimes and to acknowledge the church's complicity. Believing that the first step towards reconciliation should be taken by the perpetrators and their descendants, the founders of Action Reconciliation asked the peoples who have suffered violence to allow to do something good. Volunteers were sent to partner organizations in countries that suffered Nazi occupation and reached out to groups that suffered persecution. Today, about 160 young volunteers carry out their services in 11 countries in memorial sites and archives, accompanying survivors of the Shoah or people with disabilities. The volunteers come from diverse backgrounds, their grandparents, were children or even not born during World War II. An active family involvement in the Nazi persecution is rather abstract for the young volunteers. Nevertheless, the question of collective guilt and collective responsibility remains vivid also among young Germans. Some of our volunteers come from families whose parents and grandparents immigrated to Germany and they bring in diverse collective histories. This was mentioned before. Israelis participate in our volunteer program in Germany and in several international exchange programs. Lothar Kreisig, the founder of my organization, was a judge. In the 30s and 40s, he held the guardianship for people with mental disabilities. In 1940, he learned about the systematic killing of the sick and disabled. He was the only judge who took action and filed a charge against Reichsleiter Philipp Buhler. Buhler was responsible for the mass murder of sick and disabled people, the euthanasie. Since the founding of ARSP, its representatives have made efforts to establish contacts with the countries that suffered under the Nazi terror. This was a sensitive task just some years after the Shoah and World War II. The first volunteers began their services in the Netherlands, Norway, Greece, and in France. In Israel, there were, as we know, reservations about encounters with Germans. From the beginning, efforts to find partners in Israel were accompanied by individual contacts into the Israeli civil society, as well as by Israeli government agencies, including the Israeli foreign ministry. This is how contact, contacts were established with Kibbutz Urim in the Negev. The acceptance of young German volunteers will wait up there in the kibbutz for a long time. A former member of the kibbutz recalled why they decided to host young volunteers from Germany in October 1961. He said, because of the fact that there were few people in Urim who had been directly affected by the Shoah, 
And because also some people had in mind the benefit of the young workers for the kibbutz, so it was decided to respond positively to the request of the German group. Actually, the first group of RSF volunteers was supposed to leave for Israel already in April 1961. This departure was then postponed due to the impact of the Eichmann trial in the Israeli society. The willingness to receive volunteers from Germany had also decreased in Kibbutz Urim. In a way, this was the, first, uh, the very first contact between Aktion Sühnezeichen and Gabriel Bach. At that time, ASF was looking for further partners in Israel. There were all too understandable also rejections. For example, at the beginning of 1962, the foreign ministry and the Knesset voted against the assistance of Sühnezeichen volunteers in the Ahava children's home. Contact between Germans and ch uh, Jewish children should be avoided. However, it was possible to send more volunteers to Kibbutzim and also to participate in the construction of the Home for the Blind in Jerusalem. In the four years preceding the establishment of diplomatic relations between Germany and Israel in May 1965, several groups of volunteers had already worked in Kibbutzim and on construction projects. Aktion Sühnezeichen was a forerunner of state relations through contacts at the political level. Our volunteers have experienced wars and conflicts in many places in Israel. With the Six Day War, the social solidarity with Israel, which existed at least superficially in Germany until then, was challenged. The same happened in other wars, especially in the early 1980s during the Lebanon War, during the First and Second Intifada, and also during the military confrontation with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The volunteers have grown politically in finding and taking a stand. During their year in Israel, they experienced to listen to people with different perspectives and to resist one-sided explanations. And uh, all what we heard today about Gabriel Bach is that they met people who, are, who were really able to listen to different perspectives. And this is also something um, by these meetings, meeting these people um, helps the, the volunteers to grow. They also develop a high degree of sensitivity to recognize anti-Semitism and the line between criticism and hostility towards Israel. Our educational program helps, helps to understand the situation in Israel and the Middle East in, in, in its historical, political, social, and ge geographical complexity. All our volunteers support elderly people and meet survivors of the Shoah and their descendants. This is a special feature of the programs that RSF designs in Israel. German-Israeli relations that are shaped by RSF mean encounters between young and old, German and Israeli, Christian, Jewish and Muslim, religious and secular, conservative and progressive, idealism and realpolitik, immigrants and natives, just the way people are, both in Israel and in Germany. Diversity and contrast can create constructive irritations that can be very productive for all participants. Just as Gabriel Bach has met our volunteers and young visitors from Germany over many years. The conversations with him have left a deep impression on the young people. Mostly, he was invited to talk about his memories and his role as deputy prosecutor in the Eichmann trial. A volunteer who assisted his sister, Ruti Bach, in Jerusalem went on to study political science in Berlin. She conducted a two-hour interview with Gabriel Bach for a seminar paper on Hannah Arendt and Primo Levi. She provided me with a transcript of the interview. The interview was conducted in 2018. Gabriel Bach was 91 years old then. I was very impressed by his precise recollec recollections and his humanly and legally sharp assessments. He reported on his direct encounter with Eichmann and how he developed a profoundly 
a, a legal assessment during the trial. He criticized Hannah Arendt profoundly and was annoyed that she did not respond to his offer for a conversation. In, in addition, he affirmed his assessment of why Eichmann was not a desk offender, not just a follower of order. The young people were impressed by his way of presenting his memories. He reported on the gravity of Eichmann's guilt, his tactical behavior during the trial, the depths of the crimes and the suffering of the victims. At the same time, Bach reported without hatred and with great kindness and decency. German-Israeli relations are in a constant state of flux. When I studied in Israel 30 years ago, we were more insecure about saying we came from Germany. There were more questions than there are today about what our parents or, or grandparents had done in the war, and we often stumbled because we didn't really know or didn't want to admit it. Going to Germany was not particularly cool for Israelis back then. At least now, Berlin is a place to be now, today, for Israelis. RSF volunteers experience how important it is that the state of Israel exists and that there is still a diverse and lively civil democracy movement. RSF volunteers experience the threats to democracy in Israel and elsewhere. Talking about Israel and Germany is not always easy. There are controversial debates about Israel, the Middle East, and the question of when criticism of Israel policies turns into anti-Semitism. However, this is not new. I especially remember a debate in Germany about the Second Intifada 20 years ago when members of the Liberal Party, FDP, launched a one-sided campaign against Israel. It left deep rifts. Talking about Israel and Germany always provokes reflexes. There's no other country where everybody thinks he or she knows better and has to, and has to convince the other person of his or, uh, his or her own opinion. At the moment, the debates about Israel and the German-Israeli relationship are influenced by post-colonial discussions. These discussions are influen uh, also influence the question of the relationship between anti-Semitism and racism. These debates are necessary and can be productive. At the same time, the debates also have problematic sides, for example, when calls are made to boycott Israel or when Zionism, Zionism is equated with colonialism. Even 78 years after the end of Second World War, the work of my organization, Aktion Sühnezeichen Friedensdienste, remains relevant. We set an example against anti-Semitism, racism, and other forms of hate speech. Current research shows that in Germany, as in many other countries, support for right-wing extremist parties is growing again. Anti-Semitism occurs in Europe and many, other, and many other countries in diverse forms of expression. Racism against refugees and especially against Sinti and Roma and hostility towards LGBTIQ is on the rise. I'm almost to finish. We are glad that many young people join us in setting an example for active remembrance, historical justice, democracy, peace, and diversity. Thank you very much. For